children your entire lives. It's said that you're once the man, twice the child. And I've certainly seen that borne out in my life and those I've loved. But under the new world order, you are never a man. You are never a woman. You never mature. You never have the rites of passage. You're robbed of everything. I got to get to the news. Let's hurry through your calls, um, which is kind of an oxymoron for my show sometimes. Truth Raider in Oregon, you're on the air. Thanks for calling. Alex Jones, the disc jockey that plays classic American patriotic hits. <laughs> <laughs> <Whatever. I don't laughs> Go ahead. Like that. Anyway, hey, I have an idea for you. Why don't you open the phones for Native Americans only and get their take on the North American Union and the merger with Mexico? I agree with you. We should do more where we say... We're taking calls from Obama supporters, or we're taking calls from Native Americans, we're taking calls from active Tea Party participants, or we're taking calls from doctors and nurses on Obamacare. What's it like? What's the strain? Or we're taking calls from Border Patrol. I know they're listening. Or, you know, things like that. And, and that's when we have our best callers is when we do that. And so I need to tell the crew to start pressuring me and reminding me because uh, I really produce the show overall, decide what's going to happen and go on, but they feed me a lot of info, so they're, they're big participants, like we're making dinner together or something here. It's kind of the analogy. So it's a team effort, but, but I need them to nudge me you know, into plugging sponsors so we have money to operate and into, hey, let's do more designed shows that are better. Because uh, they are better when I, when I think things out and, and you know, try to uh, actually um, you know, order things in a better fashion. Uh, so that's a great idea. They are the true traditional voice of America. Well, they're the original Homeland Security. And, and, and again, uh, people have romanticized Native Americans, very diverse groups, obviously, from the Lords of the Plains to the Indians you know, up in Canada and the Natives. And, um, but undoubtedly, they have been through the system uh, as the late Russell Means said, welcome to the reservation, you're all on it. And then he discovered, which I knew, uh, that a large part of the Constitution and the setup did come from the Iroquois Confederation. That That is true. And uh, some of it, Cherokee had it as well, similar system. So, I mean, we adopted a lot of it. That That is what's made America so great. There is a richness and diversity. Great points. Thanks for the call. I mean, Western culture is Spanish mixed with frontier and mixed with black and Creole and Native American. It's a very rich culture. I like it. Um, the globalists don't want Hispanics to adopt their culture of family values and private property and self-defense and manly men and womanly, womanly women. And No, they want them to adopt communism and the New World Order. It's totally the opposite of what you would expect to be in the Southwest or in Mexico. This is what they're saying. Your culture is this. Just like everybody else is told, this is your culture. <sighs> and uh, if you look at the rest of the country, the reason the U.S. is so interesting is, is it does have all of those different things mixed into it. It's one reason Australia is interesting, is it was a prison colony. And used to, you got sent to prison for no reason, basically, in England most of the time, or because you couldn't pay your debts. And they took people there by the hundreds of thousands as slave labor. And did anybody know that they wore you know, cowboy hats and the whole nine yards and had cattle drives? Open free range until the 60s when it was banned. Like I saw online an old beer commercial from Australia about the last cattle drive. I meant to, I need to find that again and play that. But the whole point is, is that that's a rich culture because it was from slaves. I mean, Australia had work camps in it, folks, where you, you got killed if you talked back. And it doesn't lessen blacks' plights. It's just it makes it a, a fraternity, a camaraderie, not a shameful thing that you were slaves. Hell, all our ancestors were slaves. They just didn't call it that. I mean, Germany didn't outlaw indentured servitude, permanent slavery. Neo-feudalism is what they're bringing back. It was feudalism. Uh, Germany until 1888, the last Austrian-Hungarian you know, county or, or kingdom, they had little dukes and 
duchesses and, and, and counts over dozens of little confederations. You've seen the neat little German shields. One's a, you know, a bear for Berlin, bear rampant, I think, and then another one's an elk or another's a boar. I mean, that was it. And they bred Germans to sell them for war. And they weren't slaves with a chain around their neck. They were so mind controlled and, and, and you know, their uniforms and their Hessian boots, they were happy to go die. Until they got over here and a lot of them defected. And they said, you mean I can have a farm? I, there's Germans living here. There's, I can marry an English woman if I want. I can do whatever. I, I can marry a Dutch woman. I can marry an Indian woman. I, I can just do whatever I want. Yeah, come on. Come on over here with us. Let's go. That's what that's all about. They'll never make a movie about that because then black people won't feel like that they're crap when they learn that the Germans from Prussia were slaves. It's just all fraud. It's all lies. It's all fake cosmologies they download into us that we then just spend our whole lives believing. Let's go ahead and talk to Michael in FEMA Region 9. I guess that's out there on the former Pacific Northwest. Uh, are you, where are you in a former Oregon, Washington State, uh, Idaho? Where are you? Hey, hello, Alex. Nice talking to you again. Actually, Arizona, up in the mountains. Okay. Um, after my statement and your response, I got a real quick question for you. Go ahead. My statement is, uh, okay, my statement is, um, I remember when I was a little kid seeing Nixon on the TV in black and white talking about Cambodia and, and his impeachment and water hitting and all that. And, I, you know, I was starting to become awake when I was six, eight years old. And through the 70s, 80s, 90s, it kept building, building, building. I did my time in the military and whatnot during the cold when the wall came down in Berlin. And what I want to say is, my point is, is that I believe with the buildup of the people that are becoming awake, because of people like you, who I met through Jesse Ventura's conspiracy theorist. I saw you on his show, and I said, who's this Alex Jones guy? So I looked you up, and I've been following you ever since then. And I believe with the acceleration, the exponential acceleration of people becoming awake, that the government or the, the, the New World Order has ramped things up as well. I believe they're, because they're listening to us, and they're saying, oh, wow, we got more on our hands than we Oh, listen, for. listen, I'm not even allowed to say what happened with the show. And people say, well, why don't you tell us? Because then I, I would, no one would tell me anything. But I'm not even allowed to say it wasn't just FEMA. It wasn't just Congress. It wasn't just Homeland Security. It wasn't just... Uh, I'm not allowed to talk about it. It's just this country's in deep trouble, folks. Okay? And um, there's a reason Jesse doesn't do that show anymore. And he's in this trial right now to try to get his name back with that PSYOP they ran. And then they weren't able to shut the PSYOP down when Ventura exposed it. So they uh, greased Kyle. Kyle was a good guy, I think, overall. But he did lie about Ventura. That's all totally made up. So they had to get rid of him up there in Dallas. And, I mean, I don't, you don't believe that story that a guy with PTSD went out there and, and, and just shot him at a shooting range, do you? you, you I mean, you, anybody really believe that? And I'm real sad for Chris Kyle. I'm real sad for his family. It was like opening Anthony a couple days after that statement was made and that came out on Fox News. I, I was on the show and I said, listen, Ventura's going to sue everybody. This, I'm not, this is not a joke. I mean, I'm the one that called Ventura in Mexico. He had to go into town so I could talk to him. I mean, he's a real guy, totally real, from Minnesota, down to earth, just wants to smoke cigars and fish all day and surf and stuff. I mean, you know, he, he got very upset. Not that somebody said they beat him up, but that he said he was glad Navy SEALs died. I mean, I've seen Jesse Ventura get tears in his eyes when he sees vets at the airport with their arms and legs blown off. And he goes over to him and says, that's why I'm against these wars. Look what happened to you. I mean, these people want to take your honor away. And all Ventura can do is sue, by the way, and they've got an insurance policy. And he's going to go after News Corps after that because he can't let them go around saying he wants Navy SEALs dead.
they, they tried to throw him out of the Navy SEAL Society, folks. Because of that. Why? And if they can get him, they can get anybody. I didn't mean to digress. What was your point? You had another question? Well, my point was, you know, I love your guests as much as I love you and all your staff. And, and they're saying this is going to happen in 5, 10, 15, 20 years. But I think it's going to be two, three, four years. 